One, two, three, four, get my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive, six, seven, eight, feeling great. Nine, gonna shine, life is good. I'm doing five, ten, gonna do it right and do it again, yeah. I look into the sky with all the beautiful color, but there's more than just for me, so gonna share it with another. I got to show, to give, let out, I want to sing and shout. Take a look and see a beautiful morning that turns into a beautiful evening. And together make a beautiful life. And if you wanna see, then come along with me. Welcome to Experience Michiana. I'm the show's producer, Kelsey Zumrin. Thank you so much for being with us on this cold spring day, but we are warmed by the fact that there is so much to do in the Michiana area, and there's going to be even more as we get closer to summer. On today's show, we are gonna feature the South Bend Latin Dance, which is bringing in a special visitor from Cuba to help instruct in some Cuban dance. We're also going to go to Napanee for the third annual Taste of Napanee, which is happening at the barns. And then first, Kelly is headed to the zoo, which has just recently opened back up, so we need to know what's new at the zoo. Kelly? No matter what the weather is, it's always fun to be at the Potawatomi Zoo. And Josh, so glad to be here. Winter is over. I mean, it really is over. Is it over? I don't know. I, We're in our coats. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I know. But spring is here, and you guys just opening up again. We did. So on April 1st, we had our opening day. And you know, it's been a little, weather's been a little iffy this uh, April, but it's like you said, it's still a great time. I mean, you can see the talking baby. You can see, um, you can see the tigers are out. There's a lot of animals that are out in this cold. Um, but we have a lot of new big things. That's the what zoo. I've heard. Yes, I've heard yes, there's yes. a lot of big things here. We are there. They have so much is changing, and we're going to show you guys in just a little bit the, this uh, this big new uh, big treat to the zoo. So we're I can't about that. I can't wait. But along with the big things that are here, you also have some big events coming on. We do, yeah. So we have our big eat and drink event that's coming up on May 18th. So, if you oh, go so online, do people eat or drink at the pet? Yeah, so the I guess animals. it's a private <laughs> event. We're only going to have about a thousand people, so it's a great intimate uh, group. Um, mm -hmm. You get to walk around the zoo, taste wine, beer. Uh, there's food vendors here, so. It's it's a great event. So um, those tickets are selling fast. So we're trying to get people to buy those. But if you go on, you can see our education programs, mm -hmm. um, the other events coming up um, all year long. Um, summer hours will start June 1st. We'll be open until 8 o'clock, which is a great time to come out to the zoo after work. Um, so all kinds of fun stuff planned for this season. Absolutely. What's so cool is so many events that are here that are reaching out to the community. I mean, it is a great time to come. It is. It is. And people are recognizing the changes. I tell people, if you have not been to the zoo since you were a kid, you've got to come to the zoo because people are not even recognizing the place. And with so many changes, so many new animals, so many upgrades. I mean, it's really, really becoming a regional destination here in our community, and we're pretty excited about it. Yes, it is. Well, I am excited to go and see some of the big things that are here. So let's, let's get going. Let's check it out. Let's, let's go. go. All right. So one of the most exciting things about the zoo is the babies. Everyone mm -hmm. loves springtime because that's when all the babies are born. And one of those babies, we are right here at the Talkin. Um, there's only, you know, the, the Talkin, they're from Sichuan Talkin. They're from China. There's only about five zoos that have these guys. Um, so we're very lucky that we have them here in South Bend. Yes, we are, because I've never even heard about this. That's animal. what a lot of people say. And we even have a little baby here. I don't know if you can see her. She's, she's laying up there Let by the see? fence right there. Oh, I see her. Oh, oh. <laughs> OK. But, oh. But yeah, but one of the cool things that we do with a lot of these animals is we'll do a naming contest. Okay. So you can see these boxes right here. Uh, the zookeepers came up with these uh, four names. Oh, I love like that. And the public can donate money, and whoever has the most money, that's what the name is. And then all the proceeds from this go right directly to the field work that's happening for uh, to protect these guys in the wild. So that's it's kind of it's just kind of a cool thing that no, that's our really cool. zookeepers do. So. And that's important because I see over here on the survival meet, I mean, they're very vulnerable right yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, like all animals, um, habitat loss, um, you know, overgrazing. I mean, it's all an issue with all these animals. Um, so unfortunately, we're losing animals at a, a crazy rate right now. So this conservation work is really important in what we're doing here at the zoo. Absolutely. Now, OK, what's your favorite name here? I know what mine is, and I'm, I'm going to donate. Let me get my, my money out here. You know what? I always like the unique names. I like the Choo Choo. Me too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Me too. OK, is that who we're donating to? Yeah, that's too? exactly okay. who I was donating. Okay. OK, here we go. <laughs> so her name is Choo Choo. When are we going to find out what her name is? I think we're going to keep this out here for just a few more weeks, and then they're going to reveal it. So on our social media, we'll be revealing what the name is. So. Okay, all right. The boat is for Choo Choo here. We're putting it in. Oh, she's adorable. All right. She yeah, is just, really it's cute. It's just a fun way to raise money for conservation and get the public involved too, so that they have a little part in, it, in this naming. So. so how are they doing with the weather? Because it's been a little bit crazy out here. Oh, these guys are insane. They, we've had babies born when there's a foot of snow on the ground. It's oh been 20 degrees. These guys come from extremely high altitudes. And you'll come in in the morning, the baby's running around in the snow. So this is like a dream for them. They, they love this. So no issues there, just with us. Just with us. <laughs> Yeah, with yeah. Well, what else can we see Let's today? Let's go see. We're going to show you something else. Okay. 
These are the otters? Yeah, so when we were talking about animal encounters, this is one of the new encounters we have here at the zoo. So you can go online and you can reserve a spot and come back here with the keeper, learn about otters, and you actually can take some tongs. You wouldn't do it by hand. I'm oh. just going here because <laughs> um, I have sharp teeth. Um, but you'll be able to actually feed them yourselves with the, um, with the tongs. You're going to give them some fish. Keeper's going to talk about them, introduce you to all of our otters, and you just have this really up-close personal experience. So. Oh my gosh, how cute. So a whole family can come in a here whole, Yeah, we can have up to six people in mm -hmm. here. Um, and it's just great because, you know, as we talk about the mission and what we're trying to do here at the zoo, we feel like transparency is extremely important. And we want people to get behind the scenes. We want them to hear from the keepers. We want it, you know, sometimes you come to a zoo and you're like, oh, are the animals cared for? Like, do I even agree with zoos? And we just find that when people can get back and learn about them and really see what we do, their whole perspective of zoos change and they really see how much care goes into these guys. You can see the other little girl, she came oh, out here for a minute. Oh, I know, so are there two here? of them? So we actually have four otters here at the zoo. Um, they're separated into two different pairs. So we have one on a pair on exhibit and then we have a pair back here, so. That's great, I love yeah. that, that up and close and personal and getting to know them. And what you guys don't know is that you actually call them like you're calling like a good friend. <laughs> it's like, otters, like, come otters, 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 otters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they, otter experience, we have a rhino experience mm -hmm. where you can meet Masama with a rhino, we have uh, bison feeds, you can go on and purchase that as well. Um, and I think as this year grows, we're just gonna keep growing on these animal experiences that's for people, so. That's great, I love that we can have that experience. Now, I have a quick question on otters. Yep. Is it true that they kind of hold on to each other when they're swimming, or is that another they, well, animal? You see a lot of the, the sea otters do that a lot. Okay. Um, these guys will do that a little bit, but the sea otters are the ones you see in the films, like uh, laying on their back with their babies on their chest. Yes. So, oh, there's the sea otters. These are the North American river otters here. So. Oh my gosh, well, they're so cute. Well, they got their food and they're out of here, so. <laughs> Oh, let's go see something else. So we've always had red pandas. People love the red pandas. Mm -hmm. They're one of the most popular. But what is new are these little cubs that we have. Well, they're not cubs anymore. They're adults now. But last year we had little cubs born. Uh, little Ryan had some health issues when she was born. So she was hand raised by our vet um, and our uh, animal curator. And every two hours she had to eat. She had quite a tough go, but now she is really, uh, She's thriving and yes, doing great. She she's is. back with her mom and her sister, so she gets to be grown up as a panda. Oh. But uh, especially in this colder weather, people are loving this because they love the pandas. And the hot, because in the heat, they're always in an air-conditioned box. You don't see them a lot. This time of year is perfect time to come see the red pandas at the zoo. Oh, that's so great. Now, I know that families can come here and have birthday party for their children. But you're actually having a birthday party for the pandas. <laughs> we are, yes. Yeah. So uh, Raya is going to be a uh, year old on June 17th. Yes, mm -hmm. June 17th. Um, and we are going to go all out for Raya's birthday because people have been following her for so long. So oh. we'll have some enrichment. We'll have probably make her a little cake. Um, there's going to be all kinds of activities. So yeah, June 17th, be watching out for uh, the birthday party for Raya. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. So June 17th. But yeah, this one is just one of the other exciting animals at the zoo. So. That's let's, great. Let's keep making our way through. Yeah, let's go. I know I'm supposed to talk to you in the camera, but I can't take my eyes off of them. Oh, it's a dream. Every time I come in here, I can't believe that we officially have giraffes at the Potawatomi Zoo. It is so exciting. I was a giraffe keeper for about seven years when Where I first started. Um, and I always dreamed of being able to design an exhibit and bring giraffes uh, to the zoo. So this is just like a dream come true. The community's loving it. But yeah, so, well, they're being a little shy right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but so that we're unique in that you have this visitor center. So you can come in, see them even in a cold day like today. Uh, people are going to be able to feed them right here at this fence, oh, wow. which is going to be amazing. Um, I've heard some reports that the giraffe have been coming into the communal stall, and I even heard that a family got to feed them the other day. Oh my so goodness. they are making progress. Um, but I think with the cameras and everything, they're being a little shy and stand back here. But uh, but yeah, this is a 10,000 square foot facility. This is beautiful. It's got natural substrate, natural mm -hmm. light, recycling air. I mean, it's pretty state of the art. So yes. so you have three giraffes. There's actually four. So there's mm -hmm. uh, three brothers: Seymour, Max, and Wyatt. Um, and they, uh, they uh, about five years old. And then little Kellen, he's two years old. Aww. And he came from another zoo, but they've all integrated into a big, nice herd and they're doing great together, so. On behalf of the community, thank you so much oh. for bringing them <laughs> here. Can I just ask you, where did you get them from? So as part of an accredited zoo, we don't buy or sell any of the animals. They're all part of breeding programs and people don't okay. realize that. So it's all about sustainability. So there's actually a committee of people in zoos that oversee giraffes and they made a recommendation that three of them came from a zoo in Florida and then one came from a, a in North Carolina 
and it was all part of this planned breeding program. It's almost like a dating app, you know, who should breed with who, <laughs> where animals should go, and they put out the recommendation and we make it happen, so. That's great. Now, you were just mentioning that they're a little bit shy. Can you tell us a little bit about giraffes and what their characteristics and yeah, personalities absolutely. I mean, are like? Yeah, People think because they're so big, you think, oh, they're scared of nothing, but they have that natural instinct like a gazelle, because, you know, a gazelle in the wild, they're always, there's always predators around. There's always something gonna eat them. So um, giraffes, unfortunately, they're kind of the same way. So oh. everything's kind of leery, like who are, until they get to know you, New areas are kind of, um, kind of. They're, they're, we have to be kind of patient with them. Mm -hmm. um, but they're just an amazing animal. Yeah. They, the keepers are doing so well with them. They've been able to do training with them. Um, some cool adaptations is they have an 18 inch long tongue. 18 actually, inches? It's prehensile that can wrap around branches and pull it off. Um, what else? Uh, I mean, you can see their unique spots. So these are actually called Maasai giraffe. A lot of zoos you'll see reticulated giraffes. They have the very stark patterns. These have, I call, almost maple leaf patterns. So it's uh, very kind of camouflage-y looking. Um, but yeah, just, I mean, they're an animal you look at and you can't even believe I that know, they exist. I know, exactly. <laughs> they're kind of curious now. They they're they're kind of yeah, looking they're over getting, here. They're starting to make their way over here. They will, they'll come over. Now, do they have a favorite leaf? They do, so acacia. We actually ship in acacia brows. Um, from Florida, and they, we get two shipments every week, and it's branches, and the keepers hang it in there for them to eat, because that rough beach is really good for them to be eating. And they look really curious now, but there's a way to experience them outside as well. Absolutely, yeah, so as it starts to warm up, these guys are gonna make it out in their two and a half acre exhibit, and then we're gonna be acclimating them to come up to people to eat, so people will be able to go out on a feeding deck and be able to feed them outside. So inside during the winter, outside during the summer. We've been a little delayed on construction, but you can see this is two and a half acre um, habitat that they'll be coming out on, mm -hmm. and then yeah, the public will be able to come out here with lettuce. They come up right up here and the giraffes are gonna come up here and you're gonna be able to feed them right here on this deck. So oh my goodness. We have this really uh, cool, uh, what we try to do is like an industrial acacia tree. Um, so this is kind of the shade cover that you can go on. We can have events up here. Um, it's just a really nice space up here and a really good vantage point of the zoo. Uh, we're working on a lion habitat over there, so you'll be able to see the lions over there um, from up here. So it's, it's, we're really excited about this. this yeah, no, this spot. is really great. Now with summer coming up, I'm sure you have some camps as well. We do, yeah. So mm -hmm. camps, um, they're filling up. Um, we've got uh, classes, but the camps are going to be really popular. We have all ages, but you can check all those out on the website as well. So um, we've got some sleepovers, which is Ooh. fun. You can actually sleep at the zoo. So so it's good, some fun stuff. That's great. And are there opportunities for people that may like to volunteer? Absolutely. Again, we have a great volunteer program. We have a coordinator that oversees that. Again, go to our website. You can see how you can get to be a docent, be one of our junior educators. Um, there's all kinds. We use I mean, horticulture volunteers, everything. So That's great. And Josh, really, you just want to say thank you to you and your staff and your team here and to all of your sponsors and patrons that help make the zoo really what you said in the beginning. It is truly a great destination for families. I really appreciate that. It's been very humbling to see the outreach of the community. I mean, the community have really, uh, really shown how much they love this place, and it's, it's, we couldn't do it without them. So yeah. Love it, so. Well, we all love this place. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here in Napanee today. We were here last year and once again, this is happening. It's so great to be in person for, I think this is the third annual event that's happening. It is. It is. Yes. This is so exciting. It's really just a great way to bring the community together for one day to really see what Napanee is all about, right? Cammie's joining right. us right now. Yes, yes, we're super excited. We started this event again three years ago. We started it as uh, a taste of Napanee for our eateries here in town. And then last year we decided to expand it and give people a taste of everything that Napanee has mm, to offer. Mm -hmm. So we have eateries, we have businesses, we have uh, lodging, anything that we have in Napanee, most of them will be represented here that day. That's amazing. And what is the date of that? It's May 7th and it's from 10 to 4. Okay, so they have that window. And what I love about it is that you guys offer this free to the public. Yes. That's yes. amazing. Yeah, so we'll have, it's at the barns of, at Napanee, and we will have all of our businesses in the courtyard. Okay. And then we will also have almost 60 uh, craft artisans uh, as well represented here that day. And it is free to get in, and it's a blast. That yeah. is. So you'll have indoor and outdoor space for people? Uh, well, it'll all be outside, all but outside, we do have so shops <laughs> here at the barns at Napanee. You do, and we're so, in one of yes, those here. we're in one of those. So it's, there's gorgeous. plenty to do. You can come to our restaurant, our bakery, our stores. There's a lot to do here. So tell us a little bit more about this space up here. We're actually upstairs yes. right now. So we are in the greeting barn. Okay. This is uh, the Napanee Artisan Market. We have almost 100 local 
local artisan vendors. Everything in this space is locally made. That's amazing. And what I love about that, and, I, and you were going to mention that uh, a lot of the people of the artists that you see here will be featured as well, too, at the Taste of Napa. They will. Many of them will be here. They will have work here inside of, this is actually my store. They'll have work here inside okay. of my store, and they will have a booth outside with some different things that they've made. Okay. So. And so especially for those who are bringing food or drinks and things like that, too, they'll be able to do free samples then, potentially? Yes. So okay. our eateries will have free samples and food for sale. Uh, some of our businesses will be providing providing some samples of what they do and showing you what they're all about. So yeah, there's plenty for everybody. We'll have an arcade trailer here for the kids. Oh, that's fun. Yes, <laughs> that guy's gourmet ribs will be here okay. with his amazing barbecue. So yeah, there will be plenty. So there's stuff to do so you can have lunch and continue your shopping yes. or a place for, you know, the spouses to sit and wait while we finish our Absolutely. shopping. Absolutely, <laughs> we have a specific spot for lost do you husbands. Really? <laughs> we do, there's a sign that says lost I husbands right here. <laughs> yes, and then the Barnes restaurant will be open that day as well with oh, plenty of okay. good food. So, yeah. Okay, and where can people get more information about all of this? So they can go to Visit Napanee, our website, visitnapanee.com, and they can also join us on Facebook or Instagram. There's plenty of information there on our event section. And now this is, I think, your third annual, right? Yes. So, so tell us about how the experience has been over these past couple of years and, and what it means to the community to bring people in from around from everywhere really. Yeah, so Visit Napanee's goal is to bring people to town and show them everything that we have. So we're a smaller town, right? And people think, mm -hmm, oh, it's Napanee, mm -hmm. there's not much to do there. We have plenty to do. So this is exactly what this event is designed for. It just shows people everything that they can do here, you know, so that's a great thing. We've done it for free all three years and it mm -hmm. has grown quite a bit in the last three years. Last year we had several thousand guests and we expect oh even more gosh, this time. So. Wow. And you had less vendors last year too so yes. that's even grown as well correct during the the heart of covid we had less vendors and it's still people were just happy to get out and come see us and we're so thankful that they did and to show their pieces too right yes. this is just amazing so what are the different kinds of home goods that people might find there? so we have all kinds of art we have jewelry we have wreaths we have handmade signs oh. we've got all kinds of you know crafty art things and then as far as businesses, Rue 152 will be here. Okay. Actually, all three Rue businesses. So the Rue Distillery, oh. the Rue Brewing Company, and Rue 152 will be here. They'll okay, be so don't forget your ID. Exactly. <laughs> Samples <laughs> and things for sale. Okay. Yeah, and then we have several different uh, businesses from town that will be here with anything from little snacks to um, goodie bags that they'll be providing. Okay, all kinds oh, of that's wonderful nice things. too. And and the Barnes Bakery will be here and also. And will quilts be available too? Quilts I just will love be available. seeing these. Yes. Okay, that's, yes. I mean, when I think now, Napanee, that's really what right. I think is all of the <laughs> yes. cool thing that Quilts and rugs. And it's always so beautiful to see. Now we know this is family friendly, so we have food, we have drinks, we have crafts to buy, but what about entertainment? Yes, so Don Kilgren will be here and he is a favorite of the area and he'll be providing entertainment for the day. So. Oh, that's so awesome. Yes. So much to see and do. This is the best way to do it is to come to the Taste of Napanee so you can get a taste of what they have to right. offer. And then you can come back throughout the year too. So yes. thank you so much for showing us a little bit around. Thanks. I think we actually have a vendor that we're going to talk to. Yes. And they're going to be present as well. Yes, Kenton and Emily Hostetler will be talking to you. Awesome. Yeah. Well, hey, let's go find them. Okay. Now we're joined by some of the vendors who are going to be here at the Taste of Napanee. We have Kenton and Emily, and you guys are owners of some of the bed and breakfasts in the area. That's right. We own the Farmhouse Inn Bed and Breakfast and the Coppice House Bed and Breakfast. It's a uh, historic pink Victorian house in town here Ooh. in Napanee. You can't miss it. Awesome. Yep. And how long have you guys been doing that? Well, we've been doing it for about a year at the Farmhouse Inn, and we just recently purchased and refreshed the uh, the Coppice House, so we're excited to uh, introduce that. Uh, we just opened just in the last week. Awesome. So people can, again, they are coming to the Taste of Napanee to see what Napanee is all about. Yes. And they can stay at your locations, too. That's correct. And get more information about that. Now, you guys took part in the Taste of Napanee last year, too. So how did that impact your business? We were able to gain some of our locals to know who we are personally, because we're also yeah. new to the community, but also those who traveled in from Chicago, Michigan, who came to the event, also came throughout the year to come again to the barns and to the theater. So it helped our business. 
it's amazing how many people came from outside of the state to yeah. visit that they said they were regularly here. So yeah. it's kind of nice to see that. And there yes. is so much to do here at the barns at Napanee. So, and, and I, I always think it's great that if you're going to spend, you know, a whole weekend, a girl's weekend or a, a couple's retreat, you know, whatever you want to do, having a place to stay is really important. And I know that there's kind of limited opportunities yes. nearby. So it's great to have something that really makes it feel more like home, makes it feel Absolutely. like a vacation, right? Yeah. That's part of why we uh, went into the, the hospitality business. We love people. We love to invite them into our home, share our space, but also provide a meal farm and um, tell them all about Napanee to invite them to all the places in town. Now I have to know, what's your signature dish that you're serving for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to tell me the recipe. Don't give it away. Or I like making it. a Vermont omelet. Okay. Yes. Which uh, okay. we use a Vermont uh, cheddar cheese, which is just spectacular. So you can always pull me in with food. That's all you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> we also partner with a lot of our local um, bakeries. So we get oh, stuff from Main Street Coffee. We get stuff from the barns here. We get stuff at Coppice. A lot of different shops so we we also use those items to also pull people into their shops as well mm -hmm. yeah. awesome yeah. now where can people get more information about your bed and breakfast so our website is his his bed and breakfast dot com and yeah. if they're coming to the taste in Napanee, all they have to do is look for the yellow truck the yellow right? truck yeah. yes we'll be right yeah. here in the front entrance so when people are looking for the yellow truck what can they find when they get to you so when they come to visit us we'll have some of the baked goods from the barnes uh, bakery we'll be offering samples here so they can taste it before they get inside but they also can purchase the baked goods once okay. they're inside the event too so a little bit for me and some extra to yes. take home for the family that's right okay <laughs> perfect yeah is there is there meaning behind the old ford pickup well i I, I wanted a truck and uh, we I found this old truck on uh, online down in Alabama and uh -huh. I'm like that fits us so perfectly so <laughs> the old farm the truck old, yeah. yeah and the house that we're that we have the bed and breakfast the farmhouse is, is an 1840 Amish house that okay. has been turned into a bed and breakfast so kind of yeah. fits the sure the locale. yeah awesome well thanks so much you're welcome yeah, thank yeah. you Bridget and Alexi, thank you so much for being with us. Can I just apologize for the weather? On behalf of all of us South Bend, Michiana people, we are really sorry. It's not supposed to be like this in April. But, it's um, going to change. It, it's going to change. He's going to heat it yeah, up. Yeah, you're going to heat up. That's why we think we're you. You know? You're going to heat up this place. But Bridget, it really is a wonderful community that, that, that we have here in South Bend. How did you become a part of it? Uh, so we're actually in our 10 year anniversary right now. Congratulations. So 10 years ago, uh, David Seymour and Joel Barrett and I started having regular Latin Wednesdays mm -hmm. with just a few people and a couple bags of pretzels. And um, today we regularly get every Wednesday at our socials between 60 and 140 people uh, on a weeknight from 7 to 10 at Iron Hand Wine Bar. And we always start with the beginner's lesson and then we have open dancing until 10 o'clock. We do a little bit of salsa, we do a little bit of bachata, some cumbia, some merengue, every once in a while a little cha-cha-cha and a little kisomba. We're always open to new things and a part of that openness is bringing people like Alexi here to town. And this sort of partnership started when I took a group of people from South Bend mm -hmm. to Havana because I wanted to understand oh. more about salsa. <laughs> Why didn't you call me, Bridget? <laughs> we'll be doing it again. We'll be doing okay, it again. Okay. Um, and, and we met Alexi. Um, and since then, Alexi has been here two other times. This is his third visit. Oh. COVID obviously has made it a little more difficult for the back and forth, but we're looking forward to getting that going again, and you'll be the first person. Okay, all right. Um, on the list. <laughs> all right, thank you so sure. much. Now you are, I'm so glad she brought you here because you really are such a special artist. I, you have a beautiful artistry, and a really, you bring with it a rich culture of how Latin dance began. Yes, um, I'm very focused and uh, I would love to teach people the root, the black roots of the Cuban and world salsa. So that's why we are going to have two workshops in mm -hmm. the Latin dance. And the first one will be the like Afro-Cuban dance. It's the, the, um, the big and precious gift we receive from our slaves, our grandparents and, or ancestral and uh, the different representations and strength of nature of these uh, gods uh, and uh, the second workshop is going to be a rueda de casino which is Ooh, a very like social that. dance the rueda means a uh, wheel okay. so we dance in a rueda in a wheel 
and it's a dance to develop social um, ambience. So you dance in group. And for me, the close the thing I always think of with Vereda is salsa square dancing. You're oh, not in a square, but you're in a circle. You're mm -hmm. changing partners. Yes. Super fast paced and fun, and and just really playful. Now you said this is your third time here in our community. How do you feel about us here? Oh, I feel really <laughs> privileged to be here, uh, and uh, I hope it is not the last time. I feel really uh, happy, and I I always. Uh, come back to this beautiful family, Aww. the Latin family, and to especially the, Hard, the Hardy family. And uh, yes, I feel like home, really. Oh, that's so Every wonderful. Every time I come, I miss the less, my country, so Aww. my people, because they made me feel, they know. Oh, so are you saying <laughs> you might feels. move here? Okay, <laughs> we might have another Michiana. But next time I will bring the whole family. Oh, there you go, there they you go. They were here already. Okay, they wonderful. made it possible. All right, now how does the Rueda? Um, I don't know. The Rueda, ah, oh, yes, the Rueda. That's the new Rueda is like a wheel. Mm -hmm. And then, for example, we have always couples eh, in a wheel. And then the, the basic, you can follow the Bridget, will be like the right uh, backward and the left backward, right? And then you keep uh, the same step, mm -hmm. right? So we do it very slowly. And the rueda means there is someone leading who sets, for example, a, a fly, and then you clash on the air, right? So, for example, he said a fly, and then everybody. Oh, I this. gotcha. You, mm -hmm. you know, it's like a, a group caller. dance. Now, for example, you have to imagine. Now we have to be really creative. I know you are um, a master. Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh sure. Creation, I'm oh. sure, because. <laughs> You are one of the important <laughs> partner, partner, partners here for dancing. Okay, so I'm right here. So the guy is there and you're here. I'm here, okay. Right? Mm -hmm. It means he and I are going to keep connecting. Everybody's connecting. That's important that everybody looks at each other. I got, it, I got you. Because things are going to happen and they can change figures very fast. Okay, and that's you know? a great part of the energy. You're always yes, kind of just yes. like, I'm sure, People, yeah. Where are we going? What do we do? <laughs> yes, and it, it makes you be connecting and dancing in collective together in uh, the same goal, right? Mm -hmm. So now we go backward with the right and oh, then the right. forward, yes, with the left. Yeah, you do, get now, right, backward, right. Uh, and now when I say dame, it means change. And then she goes to the other man and he comes to this guy and then he turns, you see? And then she's open, dame, and again, Back, oh, okay. You see? And everybody's turning, it's turning. And then a fly, you remember? Ah, there hey. you go. <laughs> I love it. Yes, oh my gosh, course. this is so much fun. I'm so glad that you've been able to come in our community and bring the fire and all the hotness since we don't have it in the weather over here. So again, when are those workshops? April 25th? April 25th and May 2nd. So it's two consecutive Mondays. Mm -hmm. Both Both of them are at Howard Park in the the recreation center there, so they're indoors. 6.30 to 8.30, first one Afro-Cuban, second one, this Rueda de Salsa. Okay, that is absolutely wonderful. Well, guys, thank you so much for being with us on Experience Michiana. For more information, you can also go on to experiencemichiana.org, but come on out and get your dance on with the South Bend Latin dance community. All right, let's, then, let's dance it out, guys. That's it for the show today. Thank you so much for being with us. Remember, if you are out experiencing Michiana and you find things that you think we should share on the show, hit us up on Facebook. Use the hashtag Experience Michiana or shoot us an email and we'd love to get out and explore the things that you recommend to us. And until next time, have a great weekend, everybody. Experience Michiana is made possible in part by the Community Foundation of St. Joseph County and the Indiana Arts Commission, which receives support from the state of Indiana and the National Endowment for the Arts.
This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.